Good morning, everyone. My name is Federico, and I'm going to talk about the seventh chapter of the book, Steel Metallurgy, developed by Dr. Sboniardi and Casaroli. The chapter is called TTT and the CCT diagrams. In industrial practice, the cooling curves used for heat treatments are different from equilibrium cooling, and other diagrams are needed instead of iron carbon phase diagram. There are two types of diagram. Diagrams, isothermal transformation diagrams called TTT diagrams and continuous cooling diagrams called CCT diagrams. These diagrams were born once observed that austenite can also form new structures as bainite and martensite not present on the iron carbon phase diagram. Consider now a TTT diagram for eutectoid steel. The alloy is heated above critical point to have the complete transformation of the micro microstructure into austenite. So here. Then steel is abruptly cooled. The temperature is then kept constant, okay, and finally the system is air cooled at room temperature. The fourth C and the horizontal line at MS, so this and this, represent the beginning of the transformation of austenite, while the second C and the horizontal line at MF, so this and this, represent the end of the transformation of austenite into a new microstructure. Let's consider isotherm T1. Above the critical point, still has a stable mi austenitic microstructure. As a result of abrupt cooling up to T1, austenite becomes unstable. So, it is in thermodynamic conditions that allow its transformation. At temperature T1, this, the austenite transformation is not immediate, but occurs with a certain delay. It begins at time T1 first, this point, and ends at T1 second, so this point. Similar is for isotherm T2, where austenite begins to transform at T2 first and then at T2 second, so here and here. Above the end, this point, austenite transforms into pure light. Instead, under the end, the transformation forms a different microstructure called bainite, considered an equilibrium microstructure. Considering isotherm T4, this, it intercepts the field limited by the two red horizontal lines, MF and MS, during the initial, the initial cooling. This is the area of transformation of austenite into martensite. So, at the end of isotherm T4, the microstructure is completely martensitic. Isotherm T3. The cooling curve black initially interrupts the field limited by the red horizontal line of MS without arriving at MS, so here, and this is T3. In this area, the microstructure is only partially transformed into martensite, while there is still a certain amount of austenite. Subsequently, the isotherm T3 crosses the red dotted line, this. Here, at point T3 first, begins the modification of austenite into bainite, which ends at T3 second. The final microstructure consists of martensite and bainite. Consider now CCT diagram for eutectoid steel. After the alloy is heated and old at a temperature Ta, steel is subjected to continuous cooling. This time, the temperature varies continuously from the austenization temperature, Ta, to room temperature, according to different trajectories, T1, this, T2, T3, and T4. Cooling curve T1, austenite begins to transform at time T1 first, and then at time T1 second, transforming completely into austenite, into perlite, excuse me, and this is the curve. Cooling curve T2 similar to the cooling curve T1. For cooling curve T3, at T3 first, austenite begins to transform into perlite, and is this point. This transformation ends at T3 second, when only a part of austenite is transformed. The austenite not yet transformed becomes martensite due to the cooling between MF and MS. MS and MF. Okay, so it's in this region. Okay, cooling in curve T4, T4, austenite transforms completely into martensite when crossing the two horizontal lines MS and MF between T4 first and T4 second. 
Okay. So now we consider what happens for hypotectoid steel. TT and CC, TTT and CCT diagrams are very similar, and the only difference are related to the fields of transformation of austenite into ferrite and the presence of the so-called bainitic island, the latter only in CCT diagrams. So in this. Note that in a real case, for each steel chemical composition, there are only one TTT diagram and one and only one CCT diagram. Okay. So here it's a resume of uh, what happens for TTT diagram and CCT diagram. So we can simply read that at the end of isothermal line T1, for example, the max structure is ferritic perlitting and so on with the other cases. And for CCT diagram, at the end of the cooling curve D1, for example, the microstructure is made up ferrite and perlite. And it's the same for the others. So, the addition of following elements causes a delay in the austenite transformation, and the same effect are caused, is caused by increasing the austenization time and the austenization temperature. As a result, the more amount of alloying elements, the more move down and right the TTT and CCT diagrams. Here there are some examples, some real examples of TTT and CCT diagrams for hypotectoid steel. In real TTT and CCT diagrams there are many useful information to evaluate microstructure and these characteristics at the end of the treatment, like for example the hardness values, values shows here. Okay, for hyperotectoid steels, it's uh, the same for the other steels already seen, and uh, here there is a resume for TTT diagram. For example, at the end of the isothermal 91, the microstructure is made up of cementite and perlite, and so on for the other isothermal lines. And for CCT diagram, at the end of cooling curve T1, the microstructure is made up of cementite and perlite, for example. And the other and the same similar for the other cooling curves. Here are shown real examples of TTT and CCT diagrams for hyperotectic steel steels. Also in this type of steels, the alloying elements as well as the increase in austenization time and or austenization temperature cause a shift to the right and the bottom of TTT and CCT diagrams. Okay, in these directions. So, a delay in the austenite transformation. Finally, the addition of carbon and other alloying elements leads to a gradual lowering of the horizontal lines of MS and MF. So, the horizontal line of martensite finish, MF, is not usually present in real TTT and CCT, CCT diagrams because usually it is near or below room temperature. If MS is absent, and if the cooling curve from forms martensite, a certain per percentage of non transformed austenite is normal, and it is called retained austenite. Here are also shown uh, simplified formulas proposed by Stephen and Danes for the calculation of MS and MF. Thank you for your attention.